Hi gang, here's a 3D printed sprocket that I both designed and printed. I made it for my sparking bike. It's turned by this chain so that it can turn the discs of this Wimsource machine, which creates the sparks. In this video, I'll show you the steps that I went through to make that 3D printed sprocket. I first looked online on websites like thingiverse.com, and sure enough, there were some there. But I wanted to try my hand at designing my own. So using Blender 2.71, a free 3D modeling and animation software that I use a lot, I drew up the sprocket. In the scene panel, I set the units to metric to keep things easy. And then I set the scale to 0.001. I used the smallest sprocket on the back wheel of my bike to get all the measurements. As you can see, it's a fairly simple part with a nice flat bottom and no overlapping pieces. The underlying mesh is also fairly simple. When it was ready, I exported it as an STL file. I did my printing at the University of Ottawa's Makerspace, and the printers there are various versions of MakerBot's replicators. I opened my STL file in the MakerBot program. I next brought up the settings window. The infill is how much of the inside is filled in. Here's what it did with my selection of 50% infill. This saves on plastic and printing time. Since it was a sprocket, I wanted at least 50% for strength. But even more important, I think, was this number of shells. That's this outline of material it puts here. As you can see, that just happens to fill in the teeth of the sprocket, making them strong. Four shells seem to work well. That's all I modified, so the next step was to bring up the export window. That calculates an estimate for how long it'll take to print. If it's too long, then you can go back and change the settings for less infill and so on. When I exported it, it created an X3G file, which I put on an SD card to put on the printer. It starts by printing some bottom layers, called a raft. Once the raft is done, it starts on the actual part, my sprocket. Notice the four shells being laid down, along with the infill. And after a while, it gets working on the part which the shaft will go through. Until finally it's done. The whole thing is stuck to the bed, but once it's removed, I can take it home and work on it some more. The first thing is to remove the raft and extra material from the bottom. Then I have to sand the teeth. Both sides need to be sanded, while constantly checking the fit in the chain. And after around 15 minutes sanding, it fits great. Next I drill out the hole through the middle a little more, so that my bolt goes on with a tight fit, not requiring anything else to grip on. And there's the finished sprocket. I then remove the old crank from the Wimsers machine and put on the sprocket. It works. Once it's on the bike, I put on the chain. And once it's outdoors, you can see the end result works great. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more fun videos like this. That includes one where I show more of my sparking bike in action and more of how I did it all. Another on using a Pelche module to do thermoelectric cooling. And one on using nitinol wire, a shape memory alloy. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos. Or give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you in a bit.